um, in terms of what's going on on the ground, uh, Israel continues to uh, bomb uh, uh, Hamas constantly. It, 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 it's been bombing. Uh, it was, it, you know, there was a lull during the night, but then uh, most of the day today, it's been bombing Hamas in, in the Gaza. It doesn't seem to have had much effect. And, and, and this is, you can only do so much from the air unless you're literally willing to carpet bong the whole place, and Israel will not do that. Uh, uh, Hamas has been sending rockets into Israel in still large numbers. You'd expect Israel to have already destroyed uh, Hamas's capability of doing this, but these missile launches are so small. Uh, they have so many of these missiles. Obviously, Israel still has a huge intelligence gap in terms of where they're, where they're keeping all these missiles. But also, remember, they keep the missiles in heavily populated residential areas residential areas so that, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Israel hesitates, hesitates to bomb. So they'd rather not bomb a Gaza residential area, what they'd rather let the, 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 these bastards launch missiles into Israeli residential areas. If, if there's ever a sign of altruism and self-sacrifice, it is this. I mean, we care more about the civilians uh, in, in Gaza than we care about the civilians in, uh, in Israel. Uh, again, Israel should be ruthlessly bombing any target, no matter where it is. Um, uh, so, for example, uh, Hamas was mocking Israel today. It literally sent out an announcement saying, um, we encourage the citizens of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, of uh, Ashkelon, uh, the city closest to the Gaza Strip on the Israeli coast, uh, to evacuate because at 5 o'clock we're going to launch an attack on Ashkelon, mimicking uh, the, the Israelis telling people in, in, the, in, in the Gaza Strip to evacuate because they're going to bomb. And indeed, at 5 o'clock, they launched this huge barrage, barrage of missiles into Ashkelon. I mean, that is mocking the Israelis. And the fact that Israel lets that happen, the fact that Hamas has still three days into this, has the capabilities of doing that, is, is truly driving me uh, crazy. It's, it's driving me nuts. Uh, I know the capabilities of Israeli intelligence when they are focused, and I, believe me, over the last three days they are focused. I know the capability of the Israeli armed forces when they are dedicated to pursuing a mission. I don't understand the delay, um, and, and uh, I don't understand the, 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 the hesitancy um, I know they are very concerned about uh, the world and how the world views them, and they're very concerned about, you know, bombing somewhere and some Palestinian children getting killed and then the moral equivalency all over again. But God, they need to stop that. And they need to make it clear the difference. I, I mean, Netanyahu, wherever in Israel, needs to get up, stand up, and declare that, yes, civilians, including innocent civilians, i.e. children, are going to die in Gaza and that their blood is on the hands of Hamas. Every drop of blood is on the hands of Hamas. Israel did not start this. Israel did not initiate it. Not if you go back 75 years, not if you go back 25 years, and not if you go back three days. And somebody needs to frigging say this on the Israeli side. This is the Arabs. This is the Palestinians. This is on Hamas. The blood is, there, it is on them, and the blood will be shed and we don't apologize for it and get used to it because the next few days are going to be frigging bloody. And no, they won't say it. They will not say it. But I say it for them. And I say it, you know, for all those out there who continue with the disgusting moral equivalence. Uh, so... Uh, you know, I, it is unbelievably frustrating to me that, that they have not, that, that they're not, you know, maybe tomorrow the, the ground offensive will start. I, you know, who knows when the ground offensive will start. And I know it's going to be brutal. I know it's going to be hard. I know a lot of Israelis are going to die in this. But what is the option? What is the choice? And then add to that that, that there still has been nothing on the, on the northern front. Hezbollah is, they've given them three days to prepare three days to build up, their, to call up their own reserves, to build up their arsenals, to move weapons in from Syria. Who knows what they're doing? Um, again, Israeli intelligence must be on top of this. The fact that Israel is not bombing Syria and Iranian bases in Syria, the fact that Israel 
is not bombing the routes between Syria and Lebanon, which are going to supply, continue to supply rockets to the Hezbollah. The fact that Israel is not, you know, maybe the special forces deployed in southern Lebanon. I certainly hope so. I expect so. But the, the, the fact that, that Israel has not started the systematic destruction of Hezbollah's infrastructure in the south, Again, maybe that, that they need the time to build up the forces, to bring the tanks to the north, uh, to bring the soldiers up to speed, to gather the intelligence. Maybe that is what they intend to do. But instead of waiting for Hezbollah to launch a second front in the north, Israel should launch a second front in the north. Again, give, they should announce now, give the southern Lebanese 24 hours to evacuate and then rain hell, rain hell, and whoever is left in southern Lebanon. Uh, but of course, they're not even raining hell in Gaza. So it's hopeless. It, it's hopeless. And, and in that sense, it is, it is uh, unbelievable. You know, I, I, I've said this in the past, I think, but people ask me, uh, somebody asked me a long time ago, Yohan, what's the most frustrating thing about what you do? And, and this is going to sound arrogant, and it is, uh, but the most frustrating thing about what I do in life is that I know what needs to be done. I know what justice demands, which is, by the way, Ilan Jono's book, name a book, but I also know what will solve the problems, what will bring peace to the world, what will what uh, actually lead to human flourishing and prosperity. I know what needs to be done, and nobody is listening. Nobody's listening, and it's super frustrating to watch people do the exact opposite while the world burns. And, and you know, um, all right, uh, U.S., has brought a, uh, its most powerful aircraft carrier into the eastern Mediterranean. Uh, this is the, uh, the uh, aircraft carrier Ford, which is the new generation, the only new generation uh, aircraft carrier. It's the size of three football fields, two nuclear power plants uh, drive it. It is, uh, it, you know, uh, uh, an unbelievable fortress with, with unbelievable firepower. Uh, my assumption is that that is brought into the eastern Mediterranean, not for America to take on Hezbollah or Hamas, but it is being brought into the Eastern Mediterranean. Eastern Mediterranean means closer to the Israeli shore. Basically, uh, is a warning to the Russians not to intervene, not to enter, and as a warning to Iran not to participate. Now, I, I, I know right now, I, I guess I'm uh, competing with uh, uh, President Biden, who's uh, finally decided to make some comments to the American people about what is going on in Israel. Uh, you know, it, it sounds like he will uh, express um, unequivocal American support to the Israelis and, uh, and call the horror of what, uh, what the, uh, the Palestinians have done for what it is. It's playing in the background, but the reality is that I can't really. Yeah, so he's going through the horrors of what happened. Um, the, real, the fundamental question is going to be, um, is this going to change anything about long-term U.S. policy regarding the Middle East? Does this, does this, uh, is this a real sea change? Are we going to go after Iran properly? Are we going to make sure that something like this can never happen again? Are we going to initiate the process, which should have started 9-11, should have started even before that, of dismantling Islamist terrorist organizations all over the Middle East, including the Islamist regime in Iran. Right? Um, he's not holding Bibi back behind the scenes. Bibi is holding Bibi back behind the scenes. Like, God, you guys are so clueless about how this works and, and about what is going on and about Bibi. Um, remain, remain delusional about Bibi Netanyahu and, 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 and his pretend toughness. Uh, nothing has held back Bibi except Bibi. And, and that is true for 15 years since he came to be prime minister. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, all right. So, so, so. So Biden will talk about all this. We'll see if he sneaks in something about pro-Palestinian into the speech as well. Uh, we'll see about that. Which reminds me, uh, European Union, which initially uh, on, on Saturday or Sunday announced that they were uh, stopping all financial support to the Palestinians, 
yesterday renewed their financial support to the Palestinians. So again, blood on the hands of the European Union, blood on the hands of the Biden administration that's been supporting the Palestinians, blood on the hands of anybody who's provided the Palestinians with financial support as they reject peace, reject any kind of settlement, reject Israel as a, uh, as a, as a political entity, as a viable political entity. It is blood on them, blood on them.